All right, Jordan, there you go. Sounds good. Thanks for coming, everybody. We have a really fun workshop today. And so in this workshop, we are going to build out a video playlist engine. So the and there's a few different ways that you can do this. We're going to do it with YouTube videos, but it's actually a very similar process if you have your own videos or links to other videos. So I've started the server up and let me pull over a browser window here and we'll see what we're going to be building. So this is the final version here. And so we'll, I want to walk through a few key elements. So we have a video player, and we're going to use React Player, the library for this. And then we have all of our playlist items. And then we have metadata, such as the title and uh, the description. And I even added a few fun little things like uh, if you notice uh, we actually have a custom play button here uh, that I just put together in Photoshop and we're going to see how you can add that in to just kind of give your video player a, a custom look and feel. So if I click play on one of these you'll see it starts playing the video and I pulled all these in from my YouTube channel and notice also on the right hand side here that it is showing the state. It's showing that this is the video that's playing. If I scroll down to any of these other ones then the video gets swapped out, the metadata gets swapped, and then uh, it automatically starts playing that. And so uh, we're going to be doing a lot with React state hooks, uh, because as you can see right here, just in being able to have things like maintaining the playlist state to know which video is active, which isn't, what video is actively playing, and then what, what metadata to show and all of those kinds of things. We're going to be using a lot of the React State hooks. So that is what we're going to be building. So I'm going to switch over to the text editor. And all of this is also in the uh, in the code repo. So let me share the link for anybody and everyone that wants to follow along. So we'll open up the chat and I'll paste this in. So uh, I'm pasting in the final version, but if you go and you click on the branches, you'll see we have a final version and then we have the uh, starter one. That's what we're going to be beginning with. So let me also just pull up all of my notes, make sure that we're going to cover everything. I also put those in the readme. So if you open up the readme, you'll see we have each one of the objectives. So I think it kind of makes sense to follow along with this in order. So we're going to start off by building out the video player that can just play video files. Just start with a, a really nice and easy uh, first objective. So I'm going to stop the server and I'm going to switch to the starter branch and then start that up. So we're going to be seeing that we are essentially going to be building this entire component from scratch because it's kind of hard to put in any starter uh, code elements just because uh, you know we're starting with something pretty basic like building the video player. I did put in some uh, of the actual data. So in this case, I created an array of objects and just pulled in some of the YouTube data. Now, one thing this is, uh, you know, it's not something you have to do in this workshop, but it's just handy to know that YouTube, even without integrating with things like their API or anything like that, uh, YouTube actually makes a lot of their data publicly available. So if you look at the data that we have here, uh, you know, the title I put in manually, but this ID this is something that you can get when you go to a YouTube video and you click to share it. It'll give you this URL with this ID. 
With that ID, you get more than just the video. If you use that ID, you can get the thumbnail image. So if I copy this URL, and paste it in, you'll see it's actually giving you access to the thumb URL, and you can even get different sizes. So I can say, I believe it's something like HQ default, and there you go. Now you have a different size, and they have ones that are even smaller than that. So you have access to uh, a lot of data without even having to integrate with their API and uh, that kind of thing. So this is what we're, this is all we need right here is this array of objects. And so we have that, I put those inside of a file called the playlist data. So right here, you can see it, it's just gonna be this array of objects with a ID, title, video source, thumbnail source, and a description. So let's get started with our very first thing, which is to uh, build out that video player. So I'm gonna go home and we have this video playlist component that really is doing nothing except outputting that data. And I'll give us some room here as well. And I've already added the React Player component, and this is uh, the React Player library. Let me go, I'll show that one to you because it's a very helpful one anytime that you're wanting to put media in your applications. It's incredibly popular. Uh, as you can see right here, it has 462,000 weekly downloads, and it makes it pretty straightforward for adding video directly into your applications, along with giving you quite a bit of additional functionality. So technically, we could build something like just a basic HTML video component, but when you're doing that, you're not going to be able to, you know, slide in YouTube URLs or that kind of thing. You'd have to source video file to do that. So with React Player, you can use it for YouTube. You can use it for your own video files. It gives you a lot more flexibility. So that is what we have installed here. And so let's get started. We're just going to plug in. It's not going to look nice. It's not going to have any of our cool features, but I just want to get something uh, going to make sure that we have you know everything installed properly. So I'm going to get rid of those pre-tags. Also give us some room here. And now we're going to pull in that very first video. So I'm going to make a call to React Player. And then inside of here, we're going to just pass in some props. So the very first one we're going to pass in is the URL. I've, I'm importing our playlist data, that array of objects. So I can just call media yeah. and just okay. pull in that very first item by saying bracket zero. That's going to give me the very first element in that array. And then I'm just going to pull in the video source. So if I just pull all of that in, you can see that without us really doing anything except calling the component, we have a video player. It's not styled the way we want to, and we can't control it, and we can't add our you know cool little uh, play icon and those kinds of things. But for a very limited amount of code, or if you just need a very easy and quick way to get video in your application, that's not too tough to do. So that is a basic React player type of setup. Now, because this is a playlist, I think one of the next best things to do is going to be to how to manage our state. And also, if we open up our to-do you can see, so build out the video player. We've built out a very default version of it, but we definitely have something going there. And so this next one right here is what we're going to do, where we're going to model state management so that we can keep track of the videos. Because like we saw in that final version, we need to know what video is active. And so we're going to use React State to make that possible. So opening up the video playlist again, and we're going to add some uh, hooks here. So we're going to use a use effect hook and we're going to use a uh, state hook. So I'm going to create a state item here. We could call it current video. Uh, I'm I call mine video config. 
And then because we're using TypeScript, I'm going to kind of show and tell TypeScript what this data is going to look like. So it's going to say if the video is playing or not, and it's going to use a Boolean flag for that. So it's either going to say, yes, it's playing or no, it's not. And then we're also going to say what the active video is. And this is going to be of media type. Media type is something, it is just a very basic type I defined up here. And if you notice, this matches exactly to our JSON object. So in a, like say you're building out a big application and you're getting all of this data from some server, your media type is going to map directly to how the server sends it to you. So in this case, we're just going with these values. So what we're saying is we're gonna have this active video and this is gonna be optional because when this initially loads, we need to uh, set it. So I'm making that optional. And then the default is we're just gonna say that playing is false because we don't want to use autoplay. Now we're gonna create a use effect hook. So I'm going to, and this is only gonna run one time. So I'm not gonna put anything in these brackets. And I'm just gonna say, I want to set the video config and I want it setting plain false still. And then I'm going to grab an active video, which is the very first item in the array. So this is essentially like what we did here, except now because we're using state, now we can actually control it. So now what we can do is this is kind of setting us up to have the ability to go and say, okay, I know this video is the active one, but now I want to make this other one active and I want you to autoplay it. Because if you remember with the behavior of the application, the when the initial page loads, it's not on autoplay, but as soon as you start clicking around to other videos, it just makes kind of logical sense that you'd want those to be on autoplay because you don't want to force a user to, you know, click on one item and then force them to click the play button and that kind of thing. So uh, because we're managing not only what video is active, but also the playback state, then we can, uh, we can control all of that. And lastly, in this hook, we're simply going to return, which is what we do in a use effect hook to go back to our base state, which is just setting the video config and setting plain to false. So uh, you always put a return in your use effect hooks just to get you back to your starting state. And so this, what this is going to do is say that you have a multi-page application if you didn't have a good kind of process for clearing out the state of your components, you might end up in a weird situation. Like uh, an even better example is like with a form. Uh, if you have forms on uh, you know different pages of your site and you don't clear out the fields, then what could happen is you could have someone fill out the form, go to a different page, come back to that form, and the, the kind of expectation would be they'd be starting with a fresh form, but instead they might have some leftover data from the last time they submitted, which isn't a great user experience. So here we're going to clear all of that out. And let's also add some sizing. So I'm gonna add the height and width sizes just in a variable. So I'm just gonna say sizes. And this is gonna be for the video player. So I played around when I was planning this with many different sizes. And so uh, these may seem specific and it's only because I played around with these a lot and found ones that worked best for this application. Actually, I think I wanna go with 439, yep. Okay, so that's going to be the size of our player. And now we can kind of start building in a few more of those custom type of uh, behaviors. So uh, we have our title and this media container. This is where everything is going to go inside. So I'm going to add another div here. So in our styles, part of the reason why I kept our styles 
we're not going to have to touch this file. And so I'm kind of going to let this lead the way we're structuring our HTML and our JSX. So if I scroll all the way down, you see we have playlist, we have playlist title, and then we have playlist media container, which is what we have right here. And then we have the media player. And this is nested inside of this. So I'm going to paste that in there. And then our media player and eventually its metadata is all going to be included. And you may notice we also have this React player preview. Uh, this is something that React player actually has. We could override the class names and those kinds of things, but it's not really necessary for what we're doing. We can just use the actual class name that they have. So now that we have all of that, now we can kind of start to put in some of our state elements. So now in the URL, instead of hard coding that value in, now we're going to say video config dot active video question mark, because we don't, we're not sure if it's always going to be available and then video source. And so let's just see if this is working. We're not really going to see anything very different, or at least we shouldn't. Uh, but now, instead of hard coding the value, now our state, like our use state hook and our use effect hook, it should be what manages what active video is shown. So making sure you yeah, hit refresh, and there we go. So may not seem like a big deal, except it's pretty cool. We are now managing what gets shown here uh, simply based on how we're controlling the state, which means that we're really not that far away from being able to inject any video that we want inside of there. So now that we have that React player and you, uh, you know, if you're not following along, uh, you may wonder, you know, how you know about these uh, props that we're going to be using, it all comes to simply looking at the documentation. So on the documentation page, and I'll paste this into the chat, each one of these values is a prop and they give you uh, good documentation like this. Uh, does a nice job of explaining one, the name of the prop. So, you know, you know what you're passing in. Uh, a description and you know in the description should be you know some of the values you can pass in and that kind of thing and then also what the default is so you don't have a default url which makes sense because they're not going to give you a default video to play but then just about all of the other props do have that except for the play icon which we're going to be also using so this is nice to see because when you look at this if you have a prop that you're not going to use or that you're happy with the default, it means that you don't actually have to pass that in. So like we don't want our videos on loop. The default is false. So what that means is we don't have to put this in. We don't have to put the full list of props in there. We only want to put in the ones that we want to edit and to control. So let's kind of start going through and adding some of those props. So we have the URL. Uh, now, because we do want to control the play status, I'm going to use the playing prop. And this is going to be video config playing. So if you remember when we defined this type up here, that we're pulling this from plane. This is what's going to give us the ability when we click on one of those thumbnails to automatically have it start playing. So that is the second prop we're passing in. And uh, we'll wait to do our play icon uh, just because that's that gets into a little bit more advanced kind of uh, behavior. So we're going to save that closer to the end. So we're at playing, and then uh, I do want the controls. And so if you notice, the controls are false by default, but we do want to use those controls. Any time that you have a Boolean, a true or false prop, you can just pass it in just with the name of the prop. And this is exactly the same thing as saying, you know, controls equals curly brackets true. 
you know, so these two are saying exactly the same thing. So uh, it's less code. So we're just going to write controls there. And now we're also going to define the height and the width. So for the height, we're going to go to our sizes. This is why we created the sizes here. And then the width, we're going to do the same thing. I set this up. Obviously, we could have just hard coded the the string value in of you know a width of 780 pixels. But when I'm building these example projects out for you, I don't want to just you know show you how to build out exactly what we do in the workshop. I want to set it up so that you can take this and apply it to more advanced projects like you're going to be doing, you know, whether it's at, at your job or, you know, in a portfolio project or something like that. Uh, so in a larger application, I might do something like this. I would have, you know, some kind of hook that tells me what the window width is. We don't have that available here. So uh, uh, it won't work, but I would do something like this. I'd say, okay, if the, you know, window width is greater than, you know, 1200 pixels or something, I want to show, I want to make this 780 pixels, or if not, I might want it to be a hundred percent. And so now, because we are storing that all in our sizes variable, then uh, it can be dynamic. So as someone comes and they open it up on mobile, you are not you know, hard coding in the width like this. So uh, putting this in the variable just makes it easier to control those kinds of values. So uh, we're just creating a object and then you can use that and make it more dynamic in your own projects. So we have our height, we have our width. Um, this is one that is kind of sneaky uh, and it's called plays in line. And I found this one out the hard way uh, to put this in. And I really wish that they would just, let's find this one. Uh, I really wish they would just make this one true because uh, I literally use it in every single application that I use React Player in. And the reason for that is if you do not have plays in line, then mobile browsers like Safari, Chrome, you know, things on your Android or iPhones, uh, they will not work. So they look for that attribute. And if it's not there and you have this, you know, gorgeous looking video that you had set to autoplay or that kind of thing, uh, it will not do that. And so you want to make sure that you apply that. Uh, one other note, if you're building out, like say you're building out a, a big video background and you're using React Player for it and you want it to autoplay, you need to make sure uh, for, if you want it to work on mobile, you need to make sure plays in line is there. And then you also need to make sure that it's muted because uh, if both those things are not set, the browsers themselves will actually block the video. So just a few tips uh, and uh, things that if you remember those, uh, you won't have to have as much frustration as I had to have uh, when I was learning those things. Uh, there, there's a few other props you can put in, like uh, picture in pictures, kind of a cool one. If you've ever seen, like in a uh, website where you uh, clicked play on a video and then you scroll down in the uh, in the little browser screen, and you wanted to you know, read content or read something else on the page, when you do picture in picture, it'll actually move that video down and the user can keep watching it while they're scrolling. So that's a cool one to put in there. And for right now, let's just put plug those in and let's see what this does for us. Okay, there we go. We have our sizes adjusted and uh, everything there looks like it is working properly. So I think now uh, we, since we have a fully working video that we can customize, I think now it's time to start building out that playlist. And so uh, we can also add in the meta description and those kinds of things here in a little bit. So uh, going back to our code and our CSS structure, we're going to have playlist media container. This has the media player. And then it also has at the same level, the playlist list. 
So I'm going to do the same thing. And uh, this isn't in the master code file, but I'm going to do it here just to make it easier to see. I'm going to say this is our player element. And then inside of there, I'm going to put in that whole div. This is just going to make it a little easier to manage. And now we can just call the player element just like that. If you hit save, just make sure that that's all working the same. You can see it is. So all when we're doing these kinds of things, we're just kind of organizing our code. We're not actually changing any behavior. But now if you come back and you look at this code six months from now, it's going to be a lot easier to see compared with if you buried all of your components and all your functionality directly in the JSX. So we can do the same thing with our list. So I'm going to uh, grab our playlist list and we're going to create a uh, playlist element just like this. And there we'll create a div with the class name and a playlist list, and then make sure that you close off that div. And then we're gonna call this right after the player element. So nothing's inside of here right now. So nothing else is going to render, uh, but that's going, this is giving us a place to, you know, put all of those items. So now inside of playlist list, this is where we're going to want to iterate over. And remember media is an array. So we are going to map over those. And so each one of these is an item. And so we're going to make each one of these not a div, but actually each one of these is going to be an A tag link. And so we have a playlist item, which is going to be a div. And, and you know, and in fact, we can actually refactor this. We can put that playlist item class right at the A tag level. And before we get into, you know, formatting any of this, um, I'm going to, you know, just see if this all works, see if we can change a video. So I'm going to add a on click handler. And so inside of here, I'm going to say that when this gets clicked, and we don't even need this extra set of curly brackets, when this gets clicked, we want to set the video config. And we want to set this now plain to true to autoplay it. And then for the active video, we're going to pass in the item that is being iterated over. Then we also are going to add a key here. So the key is going to be the ID. And if you remember to former videos where we've talked about any time that you're mapping over an array and you're rendering elements, you need to pass in a key or else you get a big red warning. And the reason for that is because React wants to, React is very, very good at managing memory. So as you're rendering these components and, you know, sliding these items in and that kind of thing, React is doing a lot of work behind the scenes to make all of that happen. And so, because remember, it's generating all of that HTML and all of those kinds of things, merging it in with JavaScript to have the type of dynamic behavior that it allows for. And <laughs> so the key is really important because this helps React keep track of that element. So if you don't pass it in, then you could run into a number of various uh, performance issues and things like that. So now before we get into adding any more styling or anything like that, let's just see if this is working. So inside of here, I'm just gonna say item and we'll do it in curly brackets, item.title. And we'll see if this now lets us click on one of these items to change them out. So now you can see we have each one of those. So that's working perfectly. So it starts off on this build a drag and drop interface. If I click render API, there we go. Video is auto playing. It is automatically switched over. And so all of that is working beautifully. So now let's work on actually styling the playlist items because we have our title here, but we actually want to show things like the thumbnail and that kind of thing. So going back to the CSS, we have our playlist item, which we've already called here. And then we have the thumbnail. So this is just going to be an image tag. 
And so the image source is going to be item dot thumbnail source. And then you can add an alt tag for accessibility and those kinds of things. So if you're curious, if you, you never really looked into what the alt tag does, uh, any individuals that uh, you know maybe have some type of uh, issue where they you know they can't see uh, the screen or you know, anything like that, a screen reader will actually read off to them uh, different elements on the page. So it's all in the accessibility side of things. And so it's a good idea whenever you're working with images to give them a title so those screen readers have something to look at. So that's our alt. And we're also going to pass in a class name. And that's going to be class name of thumb. And then we can put another div. So inside of that, let's see, we have our playlist item. Let's see if we have anything for the titles or, yeah, playlist content. So we're going to grab and put a full wrapper div. And this one is going to be called playlist content. And here we're going to put in, this is where we're going to put in the title. So this is going to be the, let's see, not, we're not going with that one yet. Uh, there, item.title. And then this is also going to be where we plug in that status of uh, keeping track and showing visually which video is playing. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to, in curly brackets, say that if the uh, let's see, video config uh, active video dot ID is equal to the item ID, then I want to show this div and we're going to give it a class name of playlist content status and it's going to say plain. There we go. And so this should give us kind of what we're looking for. Let's see if that is working. And there we go. So you can see we have each one of those thumbnails. You can see which one is active. And then if I click on another one, it automatically moves plain down there and it does it as it's going and it's adding those video elements. So uh, you could uh, make this more advanced as well. So like say that, cause like technically when the page loads, this technically isn't playing, it's just preloaded and it's ready to play. So if you wanted to, this isn't in the final version, but you could do something like this. You could say something like, you know, video config uh, dot, plain and active video, uh, we'd have to do a little bit more work for like listening for when the video actually does start playing because it's not doing that now. So like if I hit play right here, notice that doesn't update, but it does when I click on one of these other ones. So uh, in order to build in that type of behavior, we would need to add some uh, some click listeners to the video itself and that kind of thing. So just in case you ever want to, you know, add that in. I think for this use case, it's uh, clear just saying that this is the one that's active and it's uh, the one that's showing there. So let's also now add in the metadata. So inside of our playlist media player, we have this content here. So directly below the player, we're going to add a div with this media content. And so that's going to have a different background and we're going to have a title and different things like that. So I'll take our class name of title. And then that's going to be the active title. So this one's going to be checking if there's an active video title, then it's going to show up. Uh, if you have a situation where maybe you, you're not sure if you're going to have an active video, like it, you're not sure if it's going to uh you know, if you don't even want to show a default one, we don't have that issue here. You could wrap this up, this entire div up, and you could say something like video config. Nope, not like that. Video config and dot uh, active video, and then only show that if there is an active video. 
And so uh, that may be something you'd want to, it, it's not going to change for what we're doing at all, but uh, just in case you want to have a little more dynamic behavior than you can. And then we'll do the same thing with the description. So we have that media description and that's where we'll put the description. So it's save. And there we go. Now we can see that we have the title, we have the description. And as we click around on these other videos, you can see that that is automatically being injected in and it's updating, which means that all of our use state hooks and uh, you know our listeners here that these are all working perfectly. So let's see, we still have enough time to do the really fun stuff. When I learned how to do this, this was this is actually relatively recent uh but if you've ever been if you've ever been to a uh you know website and you saw some really cool looking video player with uh you know a cool looking play button and uh you know cool controls or that kind of thing uh they very well could have been using this type of video player because you'll see here in a moment uh kind of how much uh customization that you can do. And so we're going to work with two different components or uh, props here. So there are two we've not put in yet. And this is another thing that I'm telling you now, because this one took me a while to figure out. Uh, if you want to have the cool looking custom play icon, you have to use the light prop as well. So uh, I was banging my head against the uh, keyboard for a while when I was trying to figure it out because uh, I kept on putting in the play icon and uh, I did not do a good enough job of reading the documentation. If I would have, then I'd have figured it out sooner, but it says element or component to use as the play icon. And this is the key word I was missing in light mode. So what that means is if you do not use light mode, which I think is not the best name, it should have something like, you know, thumbnail or placeholder image or something like that. Uh, if you don't use that, then this custom play icon isn't going to show up. So we're going to use both of those. Uh, I'm not quite sure why they called this light. I don't think that makes the most sense. Uh, you can think of it as the image that loads up uh, that you initially see. So when right now, technically the light prop is this thumbnail. And that's not really going to change because as you can see, we're using the same thing that, uh, that YouTube uses. So the, the image itself won't change, but the difference is it's actually going to be us pushing it in. So if we wanted some image that was completely different, uh, not just for the play icon, but you wanted an image completely different for what shows up here, then you could do that by just passing in a image or an image URL uh, directly to that light prop. So that's what we're going to get started on now. And so this is actually going to be out of the whole everything we've done. Probably the most complex part of it is going to be what we're working going to work on now. And so I'm going to start off by adding the light prop. So we're going to add light. And then we're going to say if the video config dot plain. So in other words, if this is plain, then I don't want to show anything. So I'm just going to pass in undefined. If not, then we're going to uh, grab that thumbnail. So it, we're going to say if video is plain, then we don't want anything here for the light prop. Uh, but if it's not plain, which is what happens when it loads up, then we're going to say, I want the video config. I want the active videos thumbnail source. And so that is going to show that value. So if I hit save now, you'll see that now we have something that looks kind of different. Now, this is not our play icon. This is just the default React player one, but this is actually a different image. So, you know, say that I, uh, and just for the sake of, uh, you know, doing something, uh, let's see just showing you how this works. I could go and let me see if DevCamp allows me to grab that URL. Yeah, it should. 
There we go. So if I grab something like this URL and I'm going to cop, uh, comment that out and I just pass in light and paste that in. This may or may not work because it may have to be on dev camp itself, but we'll see. And there we go. So as you can see, uh, that light mode, it doesn't care what the video is. It is simply taking whatever that uh, whatever that image URL is, and it's making that the placeholder. So in our case, ours just happens to be the same image that YouTube's using. So now that we have that light mode, now we can do the play icon. This one is a little bit tricky, which is the reason why I wanted to show it and walk everyone through it uh, so that when you want to implement this, uh, it's not going to take you as long as it took me. So now I'm going to create the play icon. And in fact, I'm going to make this its own little variable because this is going to be a decent amount of code. So I'm going to have a play icon element. And then this is going to be an A tag. And this is this is something that kind of messed me up uh, when I was uh, figuring out how to do this, because I thought just kind of intuitively that the play icon was simply an image you passed in and it automatically would know that if I put a play icon in there, that that meant when it got clicked that I'd want to start the video and I'd want to play it. That's not actually how it works. You need to pass in what you want to happen when that gets clicked. So if we made this a div, then when a user clicks on it, literally nothing would happen. So we're going to make it an A tag, and then we're going to pass in an on-click uh, on handler. So here we're going to say on-click, and then when this gets clicked, we want to set the video config to true. And we do not want what Copilot was trying. Copilot's really good, very impressive, uh, but sometimes it has some kind of interesting ideas for the code it recommends. Uh, so with this, anytime that you're updating only one element in a piece of state, uh, there's a few ways you can do it. Using the spread operator is how I usually do it. So uh, we want to keep whatever the video is. And so in this case, I want to say that whatever the video config data is, I want you to keep all of that state. I only want you to change plain to true. And so that's all that we need to do there. And then also, this is kind of the other tricky thing here, is we want to make, uh, when you put the play icon in there, uh, it is going to be the only element that is actually clickable. And so because of that, say that I were to make this play icon only this size, if a user clicks here, then it's not actually going to start playing the video. Do you notice there where I clicked it and it just took me the YouTube thing? That's not exactly the behavior we're looking for. We want to make it so if they click anywhere in the video, it will start playing that video. So because of that, we need to actually make this A tag the entire size of the video and so the icon itself won't be that big it'll just be you know as big as we want it to be but the a tag itself will be so here we're going to add a style prop and the height is going to be not a hundred the height is going to be that sizes dot height this is another reason why i made that into a variable uh was so because we i knew we were going to need to use it in multiple spots and then height and width. And then we're also going to make this a flex container and we're going to center it. So what that's going to do is if you imagine the A tag as kind of this big invisible box that lays right on top of that light image, the A tag takes up the whole width. The play icon it itself is only going to be about this big. So we're going to say that play icon just place it directly in the center. And so we can use Flexbox to do that. So we can say justify content center, align items center, and then uh, we can even add like a filter 
to make everything darker underneath. So uh, no, we don't want to do position absolute. I wanna do some like background color and not black because that would cover the whole thing. I wanna use RGBA and then pass in something like this. What this is, RGBA is a color code. When you add the A in, it lets you pass in the opacity layer. So we're essentially saying, I want this to be the color black, which is what 000 would be, but then I want you to make that semi-transparent. I want you to only have a 50% opacity with it. And so that's going to be there. Then we also need to add in because I want to get uh, the cool little rounded edges there. Notice that they're not like that right now. Uh, then I want to add those in so I can do border, top, left radius of five pixels and then do the same thing for the right just like that and then i believe i gave this a class name let me see did i or may not even need it um doesn't look like i did we can add one if uh if that's needed and then inside of that i can just put the image tag so image src play icon and then this is, uh, I'm pulling this in. I put this directly into the application itself in the assets directory was that custom play icon. And then that should be all we need. So now if we go down and put in the play icon prop, we'll pass that in and let's see if that's working. There we go. Look at that. We now have a custom play icon. When I hit play on it, it automatically, if you remember just a second ago, when I clicked play, it just showed me another play button. That's the default behavior if we didn't use that A tag, which is why we needed to do this and make playing true. And because we're controlling the plane variable or the plane prop right here, that gives us the ability to bypass kind of that default behavior. And then when you click on any of the other ones, they're already on autoplay. And, uh, and then that is all working perfectly. So it's going down our uh, readme of our to-dos. I think we've done all of them. So we built out a video player. We modeled the state management to keep track of the active video and also the playback status. Then we created the playlist component that renders both the media and the metadata and also is connected to our state. And then we built out that custom play icon. So great job. We've knocked out all of our to-do items. You can see we have this gorgeous looking video player with a playlist you can control. And you could literally take, say that you wanted to, you know, say you put together some of your own videos and you want to add this to your portfolio to show uh, some of the uh, various projects you've worked on and you want to add video to that and show some of the cool videos or projects you've done in video form, you could literally copy and paste that in. And all you'd have to do to make it yours is come inside of the playlist data and then just grab the, those IDs. And notice here, let me pull this over here. Uh, if that is something that you're wanting to do, uh, you could actually make this even easier to build out. So you could create something where you only need the ID that you got from the video, and then you could just inject it over in each spot. And then you're not having to, you know, manually copy and paste each of those. And uh, then you'll have a full video playlist that you can use on your own projects. So great job if you went through that. And I'll give everyone a few minutes to type in any questions or anything like that. So we got one from Preston. Um, let's see, does it work with a button instead? And um, uh, it might. I mean, we can try it. I've never actually used it. I, I use A tags and they work perfectly fine. Uh, there's only a few scenarios. I actually run into more problems using the button tag uh, because sometimes a button, if it's included in a form, can override the form value and you clicking a button actually triggers the form to submit. Um, so I I don't 
I have had very few issues using that, but we can test it out just right now and see. Um, we'd have to plug in some stuff. We'd have to put in some styles like, uh, let me see, this is inside. This is the button and we, this is going to be inside of the play, not playlist list. It's inside of the media player. So we, because if I just do that by itself, uh, okay, that didn't give us any weird button things. So yeah, looks like, looks like that works and it doesn't have, it doesn't have any, uh, doesn't have any change. Uh, if you do that, just, I would make sure to put in, it's a default, but just so you don't run in anything, just make sure to put in that that is of type button. Uh, because if not, then, uh, you want, you just want to make sure you don't accidentally, like say you put a video inside, uh, and it was got nested inside of a form tag or something, clicking on the button might trigger that. Um, if you ever run into any problems with buttons or with a tags, uh, usually all you have to do is in the click handler is just update uh, that and make sure you're preventing the default behavior. Um, but in this case, all our a tag was doing was just updating state. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't causing any issues. Uh, only time, you know, you might run into that is if, you know, clicking on that has a bunch of side effects or something like that. But in this case, you can completely swap them out and use uh, either or. Okay, and while we're waiting, since we still have just a few more minutes, just to give anybody any more time to uh, answer or to get any questions, I'm going to do what I mentioned. Uh, I'm going to make this even easier if you want to use it yourself. So I'm going to say uh, const, and then this is just going to be a um, uh, data, and I'm going to do an underscore there. Um, oh, I don't want const, const, just const data. And then inside of here, I'm going to put in uh, the actual item. So this is going to be like this ID here. And then I will pull the title and the description. Those ones are different because uh, if you're pulling in from the api then you'd have access to that um and then that's all we need and so if i let me go and take that from each one of these so let me go pull all of that out and so now we have data and i'll keep this here because that's going to be kind of our model and so I can get rid of video source, video thumb, each one of those here. So like if you're using this for your own purposes, then it's gonna make it's gonna be a lot easier to update these. You're not gonna have to you'll cut your update time or your copy and paste time in half. So here what we can say is we want to export instead of def default that, I want to export data. And then I want to map over this. And then we'll just say that's going to be the item. It's going to return that array. And inside of here, we'll go with the spread operator. And then for the video source, I'll just put these in here. Get rid of all of that. OK, now for the video source. I'm going to do string interpolation. And then we just need the IDs. So IID there, and then do the same thing over here. And inject that ID. Just like that. And I don't think I broke anything, but we'll find out here in a second. Okay. And there we go. All still works. So, uh, so now, and I'll push this up 
uh, I'll switch this over to master. I'll push it up so you can uh, take this. So now all you have to do is, yeah, like say you wanted to add a, a new video up front and just put that in there and then go to YouTube. And let me go pull some video that's different. So I can go and click share. And let me grab that sh little share link. So notice that ID is the ID that they're wanting. So in this one, I can just grab that ID and then plug in, you know, any title and then, you know, some description. I won't do that on video because you know how to copy and paste. Um, and there we go. See, we have any title, some description, has our thumbnail, has all of those things. And uh, now it's pulling in that video. So that'll make it a little bit easier for you to, um, to add. So I'll, I'll push that up to master uh, when the video is done. Um, James, let's see, James, uh, you said, where would you recommend to house the code which would build the rest of the data for each element uh, given just the ID? Um, I would do it just like I'm I'm doing it here. So uh, if you had a, uh, I mean, if you have an API, let's say you built out, like when you're building out your Python API or something, uh, you could definitely create a, uh, in the API, a database table, and then your API could call the video or call that uh, endpoint, and then it would pull it in. And uh, it could pull in exactly what we have here with the source data. Uh, so you could add, uh, you could have a pretty basic table that just has a title, description, and then just the YouTube ID. And so you'd make your API call, it pull that data in, and with just these, and then all you'd have to do is inside you would build a little serializer like this you could also do that on the server you could have the server you know generate the youtube uh video id and the thumbnail and uh inject that yourself so you could do it on the front end you could do it on the back end it, it doesn't matter either way and uh and so yeah on a production application that's what you would do if it's just for your portfolio you can do it just like we did here where you just have a file that stores those and you, know, you can pass in anytime you want to do a new one just add a new object inside there with those values and uh and then you'd have everything that you need and it render just like this Cool, so we are just about out of time. Just thanks everybody for your time as always. And I will come up with something fun next month and I will see you then. Thank you, Jordan, for your time. Thank and thank you, you everyone for, for showing up.